Hey there, CrossFit Queen Creek. Coach Rob here, coming to you from the Garage Gym. We've got Thursday's workout for April the 9th, 2020. We've got quite a bit of stuff to go over, so let's go ahead and jump right into the mix. Uh, equipment and movements that we're gonna be doing and working on today. We're gonna see some burpees. Uh, we're gonna see some dips, so we're gonna end up going over some variation on dips. We can use all kinds of different equipment between rings, benches, boxes, chairs, stools, whatever you have available that uh, creates a type of ledge that you can support yourself on. We're gonna be doing some bench pressing. If you've got the equipment uh, with a barbell, then we're certainly gonna use that. If not, we can move over to dumbbells and we can work from the floor. Uh, just as good a workout coming from the floor. And sometimes if you've got a little bit of shoulder issues, that might even be a better option for you, limiting that range of motion with your shoulder and still working uh, the chest. We're gonna be working on some double unders and some singles, so we certainly wanna make sure that we have a jump rope, and we're also seeing some kettlebell swings in here today. So a kettlebell, a dumbbell, or a plate, even a weighted pack uh, will work well for doing the kettlebell swings. So let's jump right on in and get going with the warm-up. The warm-up that we have for you today is two rounds. We're gonna start out with 50 jumping jacks. We all know jumping jacks. You start with your feet below the hips, hands at your sides, and as you jump up, the hands touch and back down counts for one. So that's one, two, three, four. We're gonna go through that 50 repetitions and then we're gonna move into burpees. So as far as burpees go, we're just gonna come down. If you drop your hands to the ground, take the feet, kick them back, come down to the floor, hips and chest touch the floor, then we jump our hands back to and up, right? So one, we're gonna go through and do 10 of those. Once we're done with the 10 burpees, we move into some air squats, feet below the hips, toes canted out. As we come down, the hips go back first, getting the weight over the heels. Track the knees out nice and wide as we drop down in. And as we come back out, keep those knees out nice and wide and squeeze with your glutes on the way up for full extension of the hips, standing up nice and tall. That is a complete air squat. Then we move into scor scorpions. This one might be a little bit new to you, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the deck for you. With a scorpion, we're gonna lay flat on the ground. Once we're laying flat on the ground, we take our arms to our sides. We're gonna try and keep our shoulders down on the floor. As we're doing this, we'll take one leg, doesn't matter which side, and we're gonna bring it across as far as you can with, with your shoulders still touching the ground. Then we bring it back, come back, do the other side. We're gonna go back and forth 10 times. Go through that motion five times per leg. We'll give you 10 repetitions. We're gonna repeat those movements two rounds. Then we're gonna move into our first uh, weight exercise or strength program. <clears throat> and it's gonna consist of dips, bench press, and rows. Okay, so first things first, we'll talk about the dips. We're going to do eight to 10 reps. Now, if you have yourself a set of rings, then we want to certainly use the rings. If you have some rings, a couple of things, we want to make sure that we're keeping those rings in nice and tight, okay? You get a good firm grip. As we come down, make sure that our shoulders drop down and then we press all the way up. We're keeping those rings in nice and close, keeping those elbows in tight the whole time as you're pressing. If you don't have a set of rings, then we can scale this to use pretty much anything else. I have a bench here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this bench. As I come down, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sit on the bench, and then I'm gonna place my hands right on the end of the bench. I'm gonna take myself out like this, and then I'm gonna lower my body down, and I'm gonna press back up. I'm just working and using the triceps to press my body weight back up, just like this. If I wanna make it a little bit harder, I'm gonna extend my legs out, and I'm not gonna be able to support so much of my body weight on my legs, just like this. Now, if you wanna, if you don't have a bench, or maybe those seem like they're a little tough, we can even go to the floor. Floor dips. Now with a floor dip, you're gonna to wanna to keep your legs bent a little bit. We're gonna take both hands, place them behind us, fingers pointed forward, elbows pointed back. Then we're gonna pick ourselves up. We're just gonna lower down. Range of motion is a lot less, but trust me, if you do enough of these, you're gonna feel it. Uh, we can even go so far as to use a couple of different chairs. I've got some stools here, so we'll go ahead and use these stools. Now the stools move, so 
These aren't the uh, sturdiest, but they'll have to do for an example. Uh, a couple of kitchen chairs might actually be a better option. But as we come down, I'm gonna put one hand on each. I'm gonna lower my body between the chairs as I come down. It allows for a much longer or a much deeper range of motion. And then I'm gonna press up, just like so. So if you got something that doesn't have spinny tops on them or spinny seats, that's definitely a better option. But there's your scaling options for your dips. From there, we're gonna move into bench press. And again, we're gonna go from eight to 10 reps, depending on where you're comfortable. If you've got a bench, then when we come down on the bench, just a couple of key things, things that I like to look for when I'm watching uh, people bench. As you lay back and you go into the bench, when you lay underneath the bar, you wanna make sure that your line of sight is looking right at the bar or maybe just behind the bar. But the whole point to this is once you go ahead and you find your grip, I like to take my thumbs and line them up on the knurling. Okay, that way my hands are evenly spaced on the bar. When I lift the bar off the rack and I come forward, I'm away from the J-hooks. I'm away from the rack itself. So as I bring the bar down, my elbows come down to a 45 and the bar comes to my sternum. I've got my feet firmly planted on the floor and I press up. I bring it back down and I press it back up. And notice my wrists are not curling backwards like when I'm in a front rack type position. My wrists are straight and I'm pressing up and down that way. Now, if we don't have that kind of setup and we've got just a set of dumbbells that we're working with, that's perfectly fine. We can grab our dumbbells, come down to the floor. As we come down to the floor, we're here again, make sure those arms are at a 45. And as we come up, we just press up to the top and then come back down until our arms are firmly against the ground and come back up. The fun part about this is we can play with a couple of different options. We can press this way, or we can turn our hands in and we can press this way as well. You get a couple of different options when you're playing with this dumbbell bench from the ground. Now, that brings us into rows. If we have the barbell set up, we can use the barbell. Now, when we go to do a barbell row, a couple of things that we wanna watch for, feet under the hips, right? When we come down to grab the bar, we're gonna treat this as if we're going to deadlift. So we step all the way to the bar, bring our hips back, track the knees out, making sure the shins stay vertical, grabbing outside of where our hands are not gonna interfere with our legs. When we go to pick up, our shoulders and our hips rise at the same time bringing that bar close, shaving the legs with the bar until we get to the top of the knees, then we're gonna stand tall, okay? Once we're here, we're gonna kick the hips back, let the barbell come down to the top of the knees, then we're gonna come out just a little bit, and from here, we're gonna lead with the elbows and pull to the sternum, just like this. Okay, so now if you're gonna be using the dumbbells to do the rows, what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat this the same, all right? We're gonna always come down and always make sure that we're, at, anytime we're picking up a load, we're picking up a load like we're doing a deadlift. So feet under the hips, or I'm sorry, yes, feet under the hips, kick those hips back, come on down, nice flat back. As we go and we pick up our load, we stand up nice and tall, then the hips go back again, and we come down with a nice flat back, and we're gonna let those bar, the dumbbells hang as if they were a barbell. Then from here, all we're gonna do, we're gonna pinch those shoulder blades together, we're gonna to lead with the elbows, and we're gonna bring them back. Just like we had a barbell in our hand, we're just doing it with two independent dumbbells. And we're gonna go through, and we're gonna do eight to 10 reps. Just like that. Okay, so we're gonna run through those three motions five times. So eight to 10, eight to 10, eight to 10, repeat. Go through five rounds, then you're complete with there. How we're scoring this in Wattify is we're gonna post the weight that we used for our bench press. That's what we're gonna log into Wattify as far as our scores go. Then we're gonna move into our final workout that we have for the day. 
And that's going to be, it's going to consist of two rounds of 75 double unders. If we're doing singles, we're going to double that. So that's 150 singles. Then we're going to go into 75 kettlebell swings. All right, this is going to take a while with kettlebell swings. I imagine that those are not going to go unbroken. Uh, or you're using an extremely lightweight so that you can go unbroken. I don't think that I've ever even attempted to go 75 kettlebell swings unbroken. I guess we'll see what happens. And then we're moving into mountain climbers. Now again, remember with mountain climbers, think high knees in the push-up position. So we'll go over all these real quick. I like to uh, talk about the jump rope just a little bit. So here we go. Jump rope, a couple of quick fundamentals. All right, when we've got our jump rope, we wanna step through, make sure that we're bringing the arms forward. Therefore, we're making sure the rope is behind our legs and we're not standing on the rope, okay? And then from here, we're gonna make sure that we have relaxed shoulders. We're gonna make sure that we're keeping our elbows in nice and tight. And we're gonna utilize the wrists to spin the rope. So, here we are jumping, all right? We're either gonna do 150 singles, or we're gonna work on our doubles. All right, once we get through 75 of those doubles, then we're gonna go into kettlebell swings. Now with a kettlebell swing, if you have a kettlebell, Coach Kate put out a really good kettlebell video earlier this morning. So if you didn't get an opportunity to see that, scroll down the feed a little bit and watch that. She did a really good explanation with a broomstick, uh, talking about keeping everything in line between your head, your shoulders, uh, your back and your butt. So when you kick your hips back and you're coming back in, you wanna have that nice neutral spine, everything working together. So when you come up and you engage the hips, and you squeeze your glutes, you're getting all that power in the swing, bringing it forward, just like, just like so. So everybody definitely go check out that video. I love it when uh, Coach Kate puts out those knowledge bombs with the kettlebell. So you're gonna go through 75 of those kettlebell swings, then we're gonna go into mountain climbers. So again, think high knees, just uh, down in the plank position. So down to the floor. Hands below the shoulders. We're gonna bring those knees up nice and tall while we're holding a good plank position. So here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So we're gonna go through two rounds of that. 75 doubles or 150 singles, 75 kettlebell swings, and 75 mountain climbers, and we are going for time. So you're gonna to wanna to log that time when you finish that last mountain climber into Wattify. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. So, like always, comment below, ask questions, reach out to your coaches. This will be up on the YouTube channel. And log in, Wattify, pretty please, and thank you. I'll catch you next time.